Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. After like 20 minutes of technical <laughs> snafus, I'm so glad that we could make this happen. Yeah, it only took a year. Yeah, I right? <laughs> so everyone, this is Kiss of Sins. Hi. Finally got her here. It has been, I've been harassing her for a while. It got to the point where I was like, I need to stop bothering her because she's going to think I'm a fucking psycho. <laughs> no, I love it. I know. The only, thing, the only thing that kept me going is that the one time, one of the times you responded, you were like, I really want to do it. So I was like, okay, she wants to do it. Otherwise, you'd just be like, sure, let me look at my schedule and never get back to you. But you sounded like you wanted to do it. Like so all like, excited and then never yeah. respond. <laughs> well, I get – we were just talking about like how she needs to get Gmail so she can use the snooze button because that thing's amazing. Oh, my God. But yeah. I know how busy you've been. So yeah. I really appreciate you coming no, on. No, I appreciate it. Um, I have really so, wanted to come. Yes. 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 <laughs> well, now you're here Thank and you. I'm never letting you leave. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having me. <laughs> So how have you been? <clears throat> I'm so good. Yeah. I mean, it's been an incredible... I've really watched you like grow in this industry. It's yeah, been amazing. It's been a crazy, crazy year. And just like every year, it just kind of keeps getting bigger for you, doesn't it? Yeah. I feel like this year has been like my breakout year where I just like put my head down and I've just been working like crazy yeah. ever since January. Are you still loving it or are you starting to feel a little jaded? <laughs> I'm not jaded, but I do notice myself. I'm tired Yes. So um, after a year, I'm I'm happy to take you know a couple months off. And, yeah. Are you planning on doing that? Well, I'm getting a boob job. Everybody. Right. 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 So I'll have to take you know six week at least six weeks off for that. Right. So I'm going to take that time to you know blog and mm-hmm. return emails, <laughs> <laughs> things of that nature. <laughs> so yeah, it's just been a crazy year. So since we're on the topic, um, what made you decide to get a boob job? Well, I have always wanted a boob job since mm-hmm. I was like a little. Like, I think I was 14 or 16 the first time I ever wanted them and Mm -hmm. have been making consultations and appointments since I was 18 and Mm -hmm. canceling it and double thinking it or whatever you call that. Right. Double thinking? Um, Second guessing myself. (laughs) Second guessing. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Second guessing myself. But I just want, like, I just want them. Right. And I keep canceling and I keep regretting it. So I just want some jiggly jugs, you know? Yeah. You know, and I'm pillows. assuming that, like, it sounds like you've done a lot of research. A lot. Like, so too I'm much. assuming that you found a doctor that you're really happy with and you think is going to do a good job. Yeah, like a really natural look. And yeah. Just some, I just want a little more jigglies. Like what right. they look like when they're pushed together. That's all I want. Right, right, right. <laughs> you know? And that, now there's been a lot of controversy about that. And I've watched, like, your Twitter <laughs> oh, yeah. and, like, your <laughs> Instagram so and people responding. And how is that? I mean, the reason why you didn't get it for a while, was it because of your fans or was it just like because you were afraid of how it would turn out? Um, well, both. I, I really like my boobs. That's the problem. I think mm. that like a lot of girls like hate their boobs and then mm-hmm. they get a boob job. It's like this easy thing. But I really yeah. like them. Yeah, I they're really wish nice. wish they were bigger. Right. But yeah, everyone's always mad at me on the internet. Like I feel like I do something and they're mad and then I – so I do what they want and then they're like mad again. Yeah, <laughs> so you definitely way, can't you make can't everybody win. happy. Yeah. That's for sure. And especially like I think people feel a real kind of emotional connection to you because you're very interactive <laughs> with your fans yeah. and you're very honest you know you used to write those really long like Instagram posts about your life and yeah. what you were going through and I loved reading those like Thank I think you. I told you once like I really um, I really loved those and I, you. you took these beautiful photos and you just talked about like things in your life that you were grateful for and that you know just your kind of everyday like living in Hawaii and yeah. all that kind of stuff and I think that you really made people feel like they knew you on a more personal level I and I think that's why your fans get, take things so personally yeah, they really do take your decisions personally because they feel like they know you <laughs> yeah, like how could you not yeah. consult me <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> yeah I totally feel exactly but in the end you got to do what makes you happy yeah so um Tell me a little. Do you are you ever going to go back to writing like those? I really, really want to those posts. So I, I started a blog, my Happy Instead blog, right before I got really busy, mm-hmm. and I've just been way too busy. But yeah. I'm hoping that I know for sure. You know, during my boob job time off, I'm going to get back into writing because that was my my real passion. You know, yeah. that's what got me into porn. So yeah, I, I really want to get back into that. And I miss the fans. Like those fans meant a lot more to me than mm-hmm. not more. I shouldn't say that, but. They were great, the mm-hmm. fans that read my writing, you know, and they really knew me, like you said. Yeah. Not the ones that are just like, show me bobs, like, open your ass, like, when yeah. are you going to do a gangbang? You know, yeah. the, those fans versus these fans. That, yeah. 
Even there's, though they get mad at me. There's a different, like, well, because, yeah, they feel like a personal <laughs> yeah. connection to you. And they feel like, I've been with you since the beginning. <laughs> Why won't you do what I say? I know we've never yeah. met in person, but yeah. I still feel some ownership over you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, <clears throat> and you were living in Hawaii for a while. Where are you living now? Are you living in L.A. now? I'm living in L.A., yeah. We were in Maui for two years and then... Realized that we were just spending all our money. Mm-hmm. And we were like, okay, let's go back and make money now while yeah. we can. So we went, moved back to Vegas. And then very quickly, I realized that I couldn't work the amount that I was working in Vegas and like commute. Yeah. You know, I was like, oh, I'll just drive back and forth. Oh my God. It's like a four hour <laughs> drive. It's not a thing. Like, yeah. Not working. I was working 27, 28 days until this month mm-hmm. every day. So I had to move to LA. Yeah. And you like it here? I don't really. I mean, I grew up in LA, mm-hmm. kind of halfway between LA and Canada, but the traffic really gets to me. Yeah, a lot. Yeah, but I do like it here. I, I live in Hollywood. I, can, I have a cool view. I never leave. I just Postmates and Uber everywhere. Yeah, so. I was gonna say I have a my stylist lives in like West Hollywood in a very very um, busy part of town, and she just Amazon's like everything. It's <laughs> yeah, just it's a the, nightmare the, to get yeah. around in that. City. It is a cool city, but especially there, it's like a nightmare to get around. It's yeah. just gridlock constantly. Like I sold my car. I was like, oh, it's really the parking. Yes. If you're just going to one thing to like go to the bank and you get to like yeah. circle and oh, yeah. it's like, oh my God, I just sell my car. Yeah, it's really bad. Yeah. Well, you should just get a bird scooter. Just yeah, they're scooter. everywhere. I'm so nervous of like, being too stoned and like falling on one of those. <laughs> That's like my biggest nightmare. So I don't use them. <laughs> yeah, we actually, my boyfriend and I have this. There was like a hub that was right in front of our house of bird scooters and we like hate oh, no. them. <laughs> and we decided one night we were going to glue. I have, for some reason, I have this huge box of like flesh colored dildos. Like I have like 30 of <laughs> Them. I can't flesh even remember. Color. Yeah, they're all flesh colored. <laughs> that sounds horrible. <laughs> it's just, I don't know why I have them. Someone like gave me, I don't even remember who, but for some reason I have this massive box of dildos and we were going to glue <laughs> dildos to all the Oh my God, scooters. did you? No, because I felt bad about like ruining property. I chickened out. The idea was good, but then when it came down to it, I was like... Could they prosecute me for like defacing their? What if they were just suction cup dildos and you just like suction them? Yes, that <laughs> that that would be safe. That would be, that would safe. be a great YouTube video. I know, right? <laughs> I sense. I was gonna say, I sense some kind of scene coming on. Yeah. <laughs> tell, and speaking of YouTube, tell me about your YouTube video because you really built up like quite a big channel there, and yeah. Johnny too. Yeah, Johnny really took it over because I, I again, like I just got too busy to do anything. Mm-hmm. So Johnny really took out over YouTube. He's doing really well on, on there. I think he only almost has a million subscribers now. Wow. So I'm in like some videos, but not really. Yeah. So, what what is he posting? Um, I don't know, <laughs> like a bunch of stuff. I know there was Blogs, like fitness stuff. workout stuff, but then okay. like advice, like sex advice from male points to ah. like cool stuff like that. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, it's a really cool channel. That's awesome. But you guys can't monetize it, huh? Because not adult. most of it. No, yeah, we get we're like, ugh, they hate us. I know <laughs> it's so, and they just changed those rules. Like I don't know what a year ago or something like that. Yeah, we get yeah. to monetize for everything. <laughs> yeah, I jumped on the YouTube channel way too late. But honestly, like, you really inspired me the way that you, um, like, yeah, you took your brand and, like, you created this, like, YouTube channel and then you Thank have you. your merchandise and then you have your website and you, like, did everything yourself. I'm like, that's amazing. Like, I want to do that. And then I started a YouTube channel and I was like, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, I am too busy and I just don't think I'm that interesting. Like, I've done a couple well, of video blogs and I'm just like, dude, nobody wants to listen to me talk they about do my that. fucking they day. Do that. That's the hard part about vlogging is that, like, you start and then you're like, this is horrible. Like, yeah. all I've done is gone to the bathroom today. Like, I'm not, I'm yeah, not doing didn't anything. Yeah, you used to have, like, an ass kissa, like, in the bathtub? Yeah, I had a whole bathtub. Oh, man. When I wasn't busy, I have I had, was doing all kinds of stuff. Yeah, yeah. I was, like, doing, like, a whole bath time segment where I would talk about, like, specific topics in the bath. But mm-hmm. then I just get too busy. Yeah. Oh, it's been and crazy. And what really spawned that new, like level of busyness for you was you starting to work with other guys, right? Yeah. At the beginning of the year, I signed a, at the beginning of the year, I signed a 25 scene contract with Jules Jordan. Mm-hmm. And so at, at first, during the first part of the year, I was doing my 25 scenes um, and I was under contract, you know, mm-hmm. until July. So I did my 25 scenes and it was, I was, it was pretty like, you know, uh, spread out. Mm-hmm. But then August 1st came and I could work for anyone and do anal for anyone and mm-hmm. IR and all the things. So I just, just like every day, just booked every day, like double booking myself, like just flooding the market. Wow. 
Uh, so yeah, since August, I've just been completely nonstop. And have you been loving it, or have you I been kinda... love I love porn. Yeah, like, I'm never happier than when I'm on set. Like I feed off everyone. I think mm-hmm. that like some people don't like industry people, but mm-hmm. I really like industry people. I mm-hmm. think that everyone's very interesting and like warm. And there's something like I don't know. I just feel like this, like this. You can't well, see we're if like you're a little, just listening. <laughs> we're like a little family. <laughs> yeah, totally. And yeah. everyone's weird or yeah. like has issues or like yeah. really funny and like yeah. cynical and. So I really like everyone, but um, I am getting tired. So yeah, like I said, the boob job time off is going to be perfect. And then I'm going to want to get right back into it. I was so. going to say, like, once you have your new boobs, you're probably going to get a whole like, yeah. new plethora of booking requests. Yeah. And I'm already like planning these like two big projects after my boob job. So I'm excited. Do you, can you talk about them or are they still no, a secret? No, I can't. They're secrets. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, people will just have to follow you to find out what they are when you can announce them. Or I'll come back if you harass me for... Another year. <laughs> It'll take me another year to get you back on the podcast. <laughs> so when was your first anal scene? Was it with Johnny or was it where for Jules? Well, actually it was my first ever anal scene was actually a DP. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> it didn't come out like that, but um, my first uh, anal was a Johnny mm-hmm. with, for Jules, but mm-hmm. with Johnny as the penis. Mm-hmm. And I forget what happened where he couldn't shoot. But and I had the DP scheduled after that to be like you know my first anal and then my first DP. Right. But we couldn't shoot the anal. I forget what what the reason was. So we had Mick and Marcus already booked for the DP. Uh-huh. So we're like fuck it, let's just shoot the that first. So my first anal is a DP. Wow. And did you pr- did you practice for that? Not really. <laughs> Like, is your ass pretty pliable? Oh, like, my was asshole it... is crazy. Okay, so it can ha- it can handle it. Yeah. You're confident about that. Yeah, they that. call me Gabezilla now on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> my pussy is small, but my butt just opens. Yeah. It's crazy. That's awesome. Yeah, so you like anal? Cool. I love anal. Anal is like my favorite. Really? And then DP too? I love DPs, but anal better because I feel like in DPs, no one can really move. So yeah. Just like everyone's yeah. just kind of existing, trying to yeah. like rub things together. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and it, it depends on the guys too. Like some guys have a better rhythm than other guys. For sure. So it can be kind They're of like. They're piston action. Yeah. Yeah. I know, <laughs> right? <laughs> What's one of your favorite scenes that you've ever done? Oh, man. Um, I don't know. Every scene that I shoot, I'm like, that was the best scene I've ever shot ever, you know? <laughs> and then the next time I shoot, I'm like, that was the best scene I've ever shot. So, so it's just like whatever your last one was. Kind of, yeah. I feel like I try to outdo myself every time. Why do you think that you love porn so much? Like, I, why do you think you feel so at home? I don't know the answer. That's a great question. I, I don't know. I think that I'm just like genuinely sexual mm-hmm. and I feel that that's restricted a lot of the times. Mm-hmm. And so I think when I'm like on a porn set or get to like fuck and just like express myself and just like let all that go, it, it I don't really I don't really call what I do like performing when mm. I, like at the end of a scene of the director's like, oh, that was a great performance. I'm like, well, it wasn't really performing. Like I just like let myself go and yeah. like got fucked and like really tried to feel like all yeah. the feelings and enjoy it as much as possible. So like I really just have a great time. So it's a place where you really can express who you are. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. I had also a Kira on this podcast a while ago. And one thing that she said really stuck with me. She said, porn is the perfect job for a small group of people and the worst job for most of the population. And I think you're one of those small group people that this is like the perfect job for you. It's exactly what you want to do. You're in your element. It's something that you love. And it's not something that... You're being like forced into. Yeah. Yeah. And I think people like you, like you remind me of Angela White because she kind of said a lot of the same thing. Like she's always been a very sexual person and the porn industry has been the one place that she really feels that she can, you know, express herself. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's girls like you that really, you're like an important asset to the industry because you prove that not, and look, there are some girls in the industry that shouldn't be doing this, that Absolutely. are doing it for the money or have been coerced in by a boyfriend or whatever. All Those stories are true. But there's also a bunch of girls who are really just sexual creatures Absolutely. and want to express themselves and are exhibitionists. And this really is the perfect job for them. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, it. you guys do a lot of credit to us for like, I think, changing people's mind about what it's like to be a woman in in the industry. (laughs) Thank you. Yeah, I really, yeah, I totally agree with you and I I definitely enjoy it. What are some of your, um, speaking of Angel White, actually, 
You just did a scene with her yeah. for Brie Mills. Yeah. I know she's got a new... She has a new line crazy. like every fucking week. I can't keep track. It's amazing. I know, I mean, she's, she's doing so incredible cool. stuff. But um, for a new for a new line about like dream girl castings, I forget what it's called. Oh, What's it called? We like girls or we love girls. Something like that. Like okay. Girls. And so you, because you and Angela White had never worked together before, right? Well, we worked together all the time, but never on a girl and girl only basis. Ah, uh, okay. I so, see. So yeah, we do like great threesomes and stuff, but not, I don't know how many times I worked with her for threesomes. Okay. But not like just us, you know? Okay, I see. Because I thought that it, you guys had never worked together before, which shocked me. Yeah, I no. was like, how oh, <laughs> you guys have never together. worked together before? Yeah. But um, so how was that scene? It was awesome. We were crying immediately. And it was really cool because they like separated us all day. Uh-huh. And we even had security guards. So, really? Like, we wouldn't like try to run for each other, but like it ended up that I had like the huge security guard, and Angela barely had security because they knew that she wasn't going to try to to make her run for it. Oh, so, so they didn't trust you, basically. Yeah, they is what didn't you're trust saying. Me. And they caught me like texting her, I'm like, I gotta make her run for it, and like was trying to get to her all day, and I, I eventually gave up. But that's yeah, it so was cute. Really fun. It I didn't really realize that like they kept you separated. Yeah, it's, it's so it's in the scene. It's super cute. Oh, that's really funny. So I loved it. I love that. So let's go back a little bit. Let's talk about how you got into the industry, which I guess really has to start with your story about how you met Johnny. Yes. And how initially he was supposed to be a one-night stand, (laughs) and that didn't work out. And you've never had a one-night stand before, right? (laughs) Nope. Okay, so tell us that story. I just used a condom for the first time, actually, on a Wicked set. Oh, really? (laughs) In my whole life. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, my God, dude. I had to... (laughs) Yeah, I just finished my first Wicked movie, and we had to use condoms. And oh, my God, they're horrible. It was a bitch. And I kept forgetting. I was like, oh, fuck, we have to use fucking condoms. And uh, whatever. I mean, that's their thing, and kudos to Wicked for having that policy. Yeah. But uh, it was it was kind of a pain. But it was whatever. interesting trying to put a condom on. Okay, so for um, I met Johnny when I've always been like a long-term relationship person. Mm-hmm. So I'd only had three boyfriends before Johnny, and mm-hmm. those are the only guys I ever fucked, like – Never fooled around or had a one night stand. That's why I don't know how to use a condom. Mm. Uh, and then I met Johnny on Instagram after a breakup as like kind of like a joke because I reckon I I knew people in porn before porn, but not like on a basis where I knew like all their names, you know. Yeah. So you were watching porn. I was. Wa- I always watched porn, mm-hmm. but never know. I just recognized him as like the bald Brazzers guy. Yeah. So I saw him and I'm like, oh, he'll be perfect because he won't get attached to me because he's like a porn star. Mm-hmm. And I'll, I'm going to hate him because that's what I just thought in my head. I thought he was going to be like this douchebag porn star guy. I don't mm-hmm. know why I thought that. Well, I mean, <laughs> like, I it's think like it's, an image, it's right? an easy thing to assume that the guys in the porn industry like are douches. douchebags. And some of them are, but a lot of them are really it's, great. I love them all, yeah. And Johnny's cool. awesome. Yeah. Like, I haven't worked with him in a long time, but we've shot him like quite a few times. Um Back in the day, and he was always one of my favorites. He's quiet. He's respectful. Yeah. Like he's really kind. Like he's just like he's, he's great, a nice guy. Yeah. Really nice guy. Yeah. Okay, so go on. Okay, so where, what was I saying? Uh, you were saying <laughs> that you thought Johnny was a douchebag. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I thought that it was going to be the perfect one night stand because I right. knew what his dick was like. You know, I didn't want to like waste the time. Mm-hmm. I don't know. So I, I hit him up, and we and I said I want to fuck you, and so we met up and at a bar and went back to his house to fuck. So how did he react at first? Was he was like, whoa. He was like, all right. No. He, he was cool? Like, yeah. He's like, sure. he probably gets that request quite a bit, but yeah. he probably doesn't get it from like hot, always <laughs> girls as hot as you. Well, he always says that there's, everyone will hit you up to say like, oh, let's fuck, but then they're in like some country or yeah. like in Russia or something. Yeah. And they're, he's like, okay, like if you're over here, you know. Yeah. But I was like 20 minutes, 30 minutes away. So mm-hmm. he was like, oh, okay, this girl seems, you know. And I wasn't like being crazy. I was like, let's fuck. And he was like, okay. Yeah. And I was like, all right, where do you want to meet? <laughs> okay. So it, I had never done anything like that before. Were you nervous? I was really nervous. Yeah, I was crazy nervous. I got pulled over on the way there for a speeding ticket. I got a speeding ticket. Oh my gosh. And yeah, I was super nervous. But then once I met him, he was like so shy and cute and nice. Like I walked up to the bar and I was like, oh no. Like yeah. I thought he was going to be like some douche. Like, yeah. I don't like, know. Like really like aggressive. Yeah. And, yeah he's not like that like at all. flashy. I don't know. I just pictured him that way. So right. um, I immediately liked him because he was just like, hi. And I'm like, oh my God. Like who are you? Why are you so cute? Yeah. So we went back to his house and I slept over and it's just been inseparable since then. 
And <laughs> did you know like right away that this was pretty much the guy for you? Yeah, we we pretty much just immediately knew. Wow. And like just went into a routine right away and like yeah. uh, <clears throat> but I said I would never do porn, you mm-hmm. know. I would never I'll never do that. And then we went to Mexico. We drove to Mexico and we were there for 6 weeks. We drove all the way to Cabo and like lived together there. Mm-hmm. And that's where we filmed this like little sex tape thing. Mhm. And at the same time, I was I had started an erotica blog, my Sin's Life Tumblr blog, mm-hmm. like old school, mm-hmm. and had generated just, like I had no idea about like marketing back then or anything, and first somehow had just generated this whole like fan base. I think I had a half a million readers a month at that time wow. while we were still in Mexico. It was like an erotica blog about me and Johnny like mm-hmm. falling in love with the porn star and what it was like, and yeah, just like super graphic details of like our sex. Uh huh. And then we released that. This like little sex tape thing on his um, website at the time, which was johnnysins.com, and just went viral because like everyone had been reading the, yeah. the erotica. And then I was like, well, if you want to hear the rest of this story, and I put a link and it, it just went crazy. Wow. And then I was like, oh, like <laughs> people like me. <laughs> they want to see my bowel. Yeah. <laughs> and then like I saw myself getting fucked on camera and I was like obsessed with it. Like I love watching myself, especially sucking dick. Yeah. Like, I hate all selfies I take unless yeah. there's a dick in my mouth. Like, I wow. love the way it looks. <laughs> like, I remember looking at the picture for the first time, like, whoa, dude, like, look <laughs> at this. And it, so I've always just loved, like, been infatuated with, like, the way it looks. So. That's that's awesome. You know, it's really funny. <laughs> I actually have a video that's, like, hidden on my computer um, of me blowing this guy yeah. that I met before my boyfriend. And actually, and I you was, loved it. I was impressed with my skills. I have to say, I was like, wow. But I you know what? It. You know what? No, hell no. <laughs> I already accidentally released my topless pictures. I'm not uploading this. That was not an accident. <laughs> I know nobody believes you it was an accident, but I swear to God it was. And then once it went up, I was like, "Fuck it!" I'm like, "I'll just promote it because I may as well make money off of it." Because we all know once it goes on the internet, there's no taking it back. So I was like, "I'm just gonna go with it." Um, But what bugged me about watching this video was like the my bottom two teeth are crooked, and that's all I could look at, and I've never really noticed it before because you know my top because I have an overbite, so my top teeth cover it. (laughs) But I was like in shooting down into my mouth with a. like that. Oh, I, I was see. like, those teeth. I'm like, I could never be a porn star until I got those teeth fixed. <laughs> yeah, you always notice that one like little thing about yourself that no one else notices. Yeah, of course. <laughs> no, no one will notice that. Yeah, I know. But I mean, that's, I'm so self critical that like I know that I could never do, I could never do porn for a couple of reasons. First of all, I'm honestly not an exhibitionist. I don't even like <laughs> watching myself in the mirror getting fucked, much less like watching myself on oh, video. No, yeah. And I'm so self critical <laughs> that I just like the idea like makes me cringe. No, and I'm not, not in the mirror like, uh, uh uh-uh. uh. Uh-uh. I'm not like that at all. So I just know it's not like the right thing for me. But I like watching other people have sex and filming. Oh, thank it. God. Yeah, I know, right? That's always like impressive to me, but like for just for myself, it's not the right it's not the right thing for me. I want to see that video though. I'll show it to you. <laughs> you will? Oh totally. Yes. I have it. Yes. I'll show yes. it to you. I'll yes. show it to people that I know, but I just won't publish it. I get to masturbate it later. Should I? I should like actually play it for you on the <laughs> podcast, and you would just film your reaction. <laughs> um, okay, so back to you. So okay, so you released this uh, little clip with Johnny, and it went viral, and, and then, then Brazzer signed me, and then Brazzer signed you. So so after that came out, you were like, okay, I do want to be a porn star. Yeah, and then Brazzer was like, hey, <laughs> yeah, of course, <laughs> do you want to sign a contract immediately? Of course, of course, they were. Yeah, it's a- and um, but I was only doing Johnny and uh, no anal mm-hmm. for three years after that. Wow! And you felt, but you mm. like other women. I love. I I prefer women for sure. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. So threesomes were a great thing for you guys. It was yeah to me the perfect situation because I don't need like a bunch of different dicks. Like mm-hmm. if there's just one good dick, like yeah, good you're enough, solid. good enough dick. You just need a lot of different pussy. <laughs> yeah, like that's what I really like. Enjoy women and. You know, if I meet 100 women, I'll find 99 of them attractive. If I meet 100 men, like maybe two of them, mm. maybe. And it's like a personality thing. You know? Yeah. For me, women, it's like all these flavors. It's like food, you know. Like, I just <laughs> want to like try all of, all of them and touch all of it. And- <laughs> oh, my God. I love that. <laughs> what are some of your favorite female performers? Uh, I hate this question. I know. Right? <laughs> I hate that too. When people ask me, they're like, who are some of your favorites? I'm like, honestly, I love so many girls. And I'll just think of like – 
Usually what will come to mind is just like whoever I worked with in the past week or something like yeah, that. Yeah, or like the ones I work with the most. And then yeah. I'll go home and I'm like, oh, I didn't name like all these girls. I yeah. really hate that question. But the girls I get paired with the most are like Angela White, Adriana mm-hmm. Cheche, Katrina Jade, people like that. The cre- crazy ones. Yeah. Yeah, because you guys pair together so yeah, well. Yeah, like I need – I love the girls with like a lot of energy. But then like I don't like to say that because then I love the girls that are like – unsure and like oh I'm so shy yeah I like that too so it it just depends yeah do you like to be prefer to be submissive or dominant um I prefer to be dominant with women but that's not true because I guess I'm a switch with women Mm -hmm. but I'm definitely a sub with men Mm. you don't like to ever be dominant with men I I sometimes do but I prefer you to because I'm very aggressive in Mm -hmm. general yeah so I like a man that can like tame that you yeah, know, so I'm very aggressive in bed, and if he can like put his foot down, he's like, "No, fuck you!" Like, yeah, I'm the dom. That's my favorite. Yeah, so I'm the same. I'm very submissive in bed, and I don't to like earn to it, dominate you know? men. But like sometimes I'll do that power play thing. Yeah. But like, you better always put me in my place, yes. otherwise I'll be really, like, really sad. Yeah, <laughs> that'll I'll be bad. Like, yeah, you like let it. me walk <laughs> all over you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. So, Kissa. Yes. Um, you said that you got disowned by your family. Yes. For shooting porn. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Sure. Um, so when I decided, um, I guess I was after the sex tape, but when I decided to actually do porn porn, mm-hmm. I didn't want like my little brother or sister finding me on, you know, Pornhub or a tube yeah. site while they're, right. you know, with their dick in their hands or something like that. Right. So, I wanted to be really open and honest about it. Mm-hmm. So I told I, t- I actually wrote him an email, like very professional. Because my dad's like a business, very professional businessman. I thought he was getting vodka. <laughs> so did I. <laughs> Isn't that coffee? It's, yeah, it's, now it's coffee-ish Now water. it's coffee water? <laughs> Wait, why would she want... Okay, just so everyone who's listening, Ernie just poured water into Kiss's coffee. There's nothing in there. <laughs> well, I know, but it's like you haven't rinsed it out. Yeah. So it's like coffee flavored it. water. It's going to be so gross. No, it's not. What do you mean, no, it's not? It's actually delicious. You're such a liar. <laughs> it's kind of like s- coffee water. Such, yeah, which is gross. No, it's kind of okay. cool. Are you, are you I'm happy? I'm kind of into it. Yeah, I'm happy. Okay, all right. Ernie's like, <laughs> see? <laughs> no, no, leave it in. It's great. Honestly, it's fine. <laughs> I want everybody to know that you think it's. <laughs> No, don't edit it. This is real. That you think that you should pour water into some... You, I'm so glad you were not a waiter. <laughs> He's going to edit that part out. <laughs> no, you leave that in. You're drinking coffee water over here. <laughs> okay. Sorry. We were talking about something very serious <laughs> before we went into that. So anyways, the time I got to sewn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I wanted to be very open and honest, and so I wrote him a very like structured email, a very nice email, mm-hmm. explaining, and I was just immediately disowned after that. So, wh- did you write it to your mom or your dad? Or? Well, my mom passed away. Okay, um, a few years ago, and my to my dad, who's like, I'm sorry about that. Oh, it's okay. My mom was like the cool hippie artist mm-hmm. musician chick mm-hmm. that would have been ve- not into it, but she would have been supportive. And, yeah. And then my dad's like the very like strong businessman, mm-hmm. like r- very like strict. Mm-hmm. So he is not about it wow. at all. But I didn't want them to, you know. I just wanted to be honest. And, yeah. Um, they'll be they'll be back, I guess, when when I'm done. So you don't talk to your siblings at all? No, I'm not allowed. You're not allowed. Are they under the age of eighteen? Yeah. Th- oh. Though they've recently turned of age, but I don't want to like rock ruin the boat. Yeah, I want to rock the boat. I just want to like do what I want to do and get back. And they'll they'll be there. I know they miss me. If you're listening to this, I'm sorry. No, how, it's okay. I mean, how did that make you feel? Was that expected? <sighs> I mean, it's weird. It's a weird thing, the expected thing, because like I have always been a fuck up. Like mm-hmm. since I was a kid, like I went to juvenile hall twice. Like I dropped out of high school. I've been like a party or crazy. I've always I've never been a slut until now, but I've always been crazy. Like mm-hmm. so, I'm not. I, no one understands like how it's so shocking that I did porn. Yeah, because I'm actually like doing better than I ever have. Like I I don't have time to do drugs or get fucked up. Like mm-hmm. if I do it once in a while, like mm-hmm. I'll get like I'll party once in a very great while now. But I'm like doing so well. Like yeah, I mean you really like you're an excellent you're excellent with marketing. Yeah, I'm like and dude, you're an, I'm an adult now. You're an, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like you're run an so many businesses. Now. Yeah. 
So I don't know. And I always tease him because I used to, I was teasing him. I'm like, you know, you really taught me like how to be an entrepreneur and poor mm-hmm. and by accident. Because yeah. he's like the he taught me everything about business. So yeah. it's because of him that like I do all these things, you know, with my merchandise right. and right. affiliates and you know, doing all these things. So yeah. Hopefully I'm just gonna build a base for my future and mm-hmm. they'll be around when when I decide to do something else. Yeah. And well, and you've been able to pick your family now. Yeah, like it, to me, it's like if you don't want to be around me, then I don't want to fucking be around you either. And yeah. Like if if you're willing to disown me over something like that, especially now years later. Yeah. Fuck you. Like yeah. That's how I, I kind of am with everyone in life. Right. Like, I'm not gonna like chase you and like if you don't want to be around me, like then don't fucking be around. Yeah. Me, you know? <laughs> yeah. You've always had such an incredibly like positive outlook on life. And I think that that's one, that's one of the things that I love about you. you. And that's why I love like following you on social media. And I think that's why a lot of people love following you on social media. So do you ever feel like the opposite of that? Do you ever get into like, do you ever get depressed or oh, feel yeah. like... I, 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 go, I definitely go, <laughs> it definitely comes in waves. But mm-hmm. for me in... My whole life, like since I was a kid, I had a really bad childhood. And I think that part of the way that I coped with with that was learning how to enjoy like the shitty times. And like, I really don't mind a bad day where I feel super like depressed and I'm listening to sad music and just like crying. And like, I really like those days. So I think that what I've really taught myself in life is to just like, uh, that is okay. Like Mm -hmm. the bad days are okay. So it's like, you don't always have to be happy constantly. If you can learn to enjoy the bad days, then you're enjoying all your days, you know, that's kind of how I, I look at life. Yeah, no, I think there's something to that, like really accepting the low days because that makes yeah. the high days so much better. Yeah. You know, you need that yin and, yin and yang in your life. Yeah. And for me, like one of my biggest issues is I hate sitting with like being uncomfortable or being sad. And that's why I used, um, you know, alcohol so much in my life because I didn't ever want to feel like that sadness. So I would just like, you know, drown it in vodka. Yeah. And um, now that I'm sober, like I I still have a hard time, but I have to accept those bad days. I have to accept that it's okay for me to be sad some days. And it's fun. And not, well, I don't know about fun. (laughs) You hear sad music, like a good cry. Yeah. I I see that the way that you embrace that side (laughs) is really healthy, honestly. And I think that I'm really bad at that. And I think a lot of people are really bad at that, you know, like, and and society tells us so much. Like the media is always selling us like reasons why we need to be happy oh all the my time. God, Take this the and and then always be happy. And if you have this, you'll never be sad. And it's like you have to have you have to experience both sides. That's what it means to be human. Yeah, it's fun. I, I like yeah, I like the difference. It's like seasons, you know. Like yeah, I like to go through all the different seasons and you know feel everything. Yeah, I like emotions in general. They don't have to be happy, you know. Yeah. I think that's so important because um, that's something that, you know, I think a lot of us have been trained to not deal with our emotions. And I'm definitely one of those people and I'm like constantly working on it. You know, I'll have to like call my sponsor if I'm having a bad day. And then she'll be like, it's okay to have a bad day. It's okay to cry. It's okay yeah. to feel sad. Like this, it's not like this all the time. Like yeah. You just have to weather those days. And then when you have great days, it's like, it, I don't know, it makes the sun so much brighter. Yeah. And everything's great. Yeah. See, you're like a really healthy, I, I don't know. I just feel like you're a really, you seem to just be a very, despite everything that you said that you've been through, you just seem to be a very healthy, like well put together, like whole human being. Like you encapsulate okay. all the, all the things that um, I think is just really great in a person. That's Thank why people you. love you so much. I think that sarcasm is a big part of like my life because yeah. the funny, like the worst shit is the funnier it is yeah. when you're sarcastic. You yes. Know? Like if you go to like a, like a non-dysfunctional family dinner, it's mm-hmm. not as funny, you know? So like to <laughs> me, like if it's shitty, if like it, things are going, like when you were telling me that story about how you're all the power blue and mm-hmm. you know, all that, like I'm sure that you guys made so many jokes about that, that yeah. it was like funny, you know? Yeah, it was. Like being sarcastic is like the key to life, I feel like. It was. So what Kiss is talking about is on Monday was the second to last day of my Wicked feature and we were shooting in this office set down in like uh, Pico Rivera and the Transformer (laughs) blew and we were literally about to shoot our very last scene. We had like 10 minutes left and the Transformer blew and the power went out on the entire fucking block. And I often don't handle stress well. I'll admit it, especially when I'm on set. Really? Because I I know, no. I want everything to go perfectly and like... (laughs) I'm pretty good at hiding it, but in my mind, I get real pissed if things don't go right. <laughs> and so I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? And we actually had to go out and buy a generator to power the light so we could finish the scene. But I remember, like, I don't know if you know Seth 
gamble and like how kind of spiritual he is. And he was talking about, he's like, he's like, you just got to accept it. (laughs) And he's like, you can't change it. And like him and Bridget B are talking about like, and I don't know, he's playing some um, like Eckhart Tolle for her about like acceptance of the answer. (laughs) The power of now. Yeah. And I'm just like, (laughs) fuck, man. I mean, he was so (laughs) right. fuck these people. (laughs) I know. But he was so right. But at the same time, I'm like, I just want this fucking power to come on so I can go home. I just don't want to pay overtime at this location because it's really expensive. Yeah. But he was right. Like, I, and I was thinking to myself, I'm like, this will make a good story. Yeah, it's funny. You know, like, that will stick out in your mind more than like the other days of that. that like, you didn't tell me about it, the other days of the, that shoot, you know? Yeah, exactly. Like, exactly. Because the they all went fine. The shit is funny. Yeah. <laughs> when life is falling apart, it's like the best jokes. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I mean, sometimes the best comedy, I mean, if you think about like how comedians always are like the always, comedy. like, there's you the know, sh- worst shit's happening. Yeah, to talking about horrible <laughs> things that happened to them. Or tend to be like really depressed, yeah. but those are like the funniest people because we need humor to deal with life. Yeah, you know, otherwise, how the fuck are you get through it? That's the trick. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, how, so now one of the other things that we kind of talked about it, but I want to go back to it. So you and Johnny were obviously together. I mean, you're still together, and you were only working with him, and then you decided to work with other guys. What kind of blowback did you get back? for that and what made you decide to do that and how did Johnny take that? Okay, so for maybe six months or a little longer before I had made the decision to sign with Jules and like take that plunge, mm-hmm. I had gone back and forth with Johnny like a hundred times. So I was I was super nervous that I would do something where he wouldn't know how we would feel about it and mm-hmm. then I did it and now it's too late. Mm-hmm. So I was worried about that. Mm -hmm. So I went back and forth with him for six months, like making sure that he's okay. Johnny's like the chillest guy ever. Like he really just wants me to be happy. You know, we've still never, he's still never called me like a bad word, like a name. He's never called me a bitch. He's never like raised his voice. Like he's, he's definitely the stable one in our relationship. We all need that. (laughs) We all need that. He's like the calm one. Yeah. My boyfriend's the same way. He's like always, he's, his mood is always like the same. He's almost never in a bad mood. I'm like, (laughs) what, like, how are you always the same? I'm like this. Oh, me too. I'm the same. Like a roller coaster ride of emotions and things. (laughs) Yeah, so he's super chill. He he was nervous too that, you know, maybe he didn't think he was going to be jealous mm-hmm. than he was. And of course he had feels when I started doing it, mm-hmm. but we're just so open with each other. Mm-hmm. And by the way, everybody, I have been dealing with it for five years before I started. Johnny fucked other girls for five years, you know, and yeah. I waited at home. Like I was, I went through some jealousy times mm-hmm. too, you know, I mean, maybe... 90% of the time I wasn't jealous, but there were 10% where you're, you're not feeling well that day and he's going to fuck like three perfect looking girls, you know, mm-hmm. I would go through those days. So I knew what it was like and I dealt with it for five years. So when it was his turn to do it, I kind of feel like he was like, all right, girl, yeah. Like, you, yeah. <laughs> you, you, you earned this, you know? Right, right. So although I think he felt some jealousy, he he's always been proud and like, mm-hmm. do what you want to do. He never mm-hmm. wanted to like hold me back and then I resent him later. Yeah. He's always had that fear. So Yeah, that's very true. He's been very supportive. Yeah. I have some jealousy some days, but yeah. he's so nice about it. It's not like this whole thing. He's like, this one thing, you know, I just feel a little sad. I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. He's like, no problem. <laughs> like, that's the extent of it. So, so do you guys like never fight? <clears throat> no, we argue about stupid shit. I mean, yeah, we still go back and forth. Yeah. But we've been together for six years now. So yeah. we just get on each other for stupid little things that bother us about each other. And what What is the most annoying thing that he does that bugs you? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Oh, fuck. I really had to think about that. Well, I'll t- okay, I'll tell you mine if it'll help. Okay. My boyfriend cannot load the dishwasher to save his fucking life. <laughs> and it makes me crazy. And I swear to God, like, sometimes he just does it. He does it badly so that, like, I won't ask him to do any of the cleaning up. And I will just do it myself. You just, like, put all the plates on top of each other yeah, in one pile? Yeah, like, he'll put, like, a huge pot in the top fucking drawer or he'll put plates in like totally diagonal and i'm just like i don't understand how you don't see that this is so bad like these are touching they're not gonna clean if they're touching yeah and also too he won't like rinse stuff before he puts it in and he knows our dishwasher isn't that great and it's not going to clean shit properly you can't put something like crusted with like fucking corn kernels in there 
Like it's just not going to clean. And you also can't put wood in there, but he doesn't listen. So that's mine. Oh, yeah. You don't seem too bothered by it. <laughs> oh, I think mine is like, he, well, he's terrible at loading the dishwasher, but I kind of think what it's endearing. It guys? Like when boys are dirty, it's kind of cute to me. Because I'm oh. like, oh, you're so stupid and cute. Like, let me fix uh, all your things. Oh, yeah. He can't I hang a towel that. to save his life. I think it's cute. I have to like, like refold so the towel boys. and hang it. Like, can't fold. <laughs> Like fucking make the bed, <laughs> and these is other thing where he has to use a towel once and then like put it in the fucking hamper. Like you can use a towel more than once. Okay, sorry. <laughs> we opened up a fucking like can of worms right here. You like flip the table. You're like, I hate it. Rock. Fuck men. <laughs> <laughs> I think my least favorite thing is like Johnny is like not passive aggressive all the time, but like instead of addressing things, he will be like, he'll just say like a passive aggressive thing. And I'm like, what do you mean? Like, just say what you mean. Yeah. You know, like, don't like tell me or like in three months, we'll bring up one thing. He's like, you know, this thing bothered me. I'm like, for three months, you yeah. know, so I would rather you just yell at me and yeah. we bitch and then get it over with. Get it over with. Yeah. Like, don't hide. Th- I hate that. Yeah. I, I wish you you would express yourself. Okay. But he's also terrible at the dishwasher. But I think it's cute. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't mind that. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, you guys have traveled together a lot. Yeah. Uh, what are some of your favorite places that you guys have been? Uh, Mexico is our – that's like our heart is in Mexico. And we lived in Hawaii for two years, and it kind of just always felt like almost Mexico, you know? Mm-hmm. Like something was always missing, so – Mexico definitely has like our heart. And yeah, I love Mexico. That's where we fell in love and like yeah. we just want to move there soon. So what where what part of Mexico do you guys normally go to? Uh we do three different areas. So we do to, like the Tulum air the Tulum mm-hmm. side, which is like the Cancun pretty water side. That's like the Caribbean side, right? Yeah. yeah. It's like turquoise everything. Yeah. And then our favorite Puerto Vallarta is kind of like in the middle. Okay. And then Cabo, Cabo San Lucas is like the LA suburb. Desert. I hate Cabo. Oh, I love it there. I oh, it. it's so Americanized. It's so Americanized, but only like in that one area, like yeah. the marina. I love that cool area. Like when I go, I, whenever I go there, I go to La Paz, which is about yeah, two hours it's north. Cool up there because I have a really, really good friend who lives out there, so I'll go stay with him. And um, I used to shoot uh, the Playboy Cyber Girl of the Year, and I actually shot Twisty's Treat too. No, I didn't shoot in Cabo. I shot that in Costa Rica. But I would, I've shot like for Playway a bunch of times out there because yeah, my friend's nice. a producer. So he would like put the whole thing together, which would be like amazing. Yeah. Um, so I do love that area. I just don't like, I used to love Cabo. We used to go there a lot when I was a kid before it got like really built up. And now I just like, I yeah, it's know. kind of a lot now. Yeah, I can't. But like, I wouldn't the, want to live there. Mm-mm. But like the Todos Santos place is, is really beautiful. Yeah, we love Todos Santos. Yeah, that's really great. It's cool out there. Is there anywhere you guys haven't been that's like on your bucket list? Yeah, Bora Bora and the Maldives. Maldives? The, yeah, Maldives. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I would the love two places to go. Really want to I go. have a friend who owns an island in Bora Bora. Just so <laughs> you know. I've never been there. Hey, look, I don't own it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I did. I, I would like to go there. <laughs> um, I was just going to say, because she has like little huts there. So if you ever want to go. Oh, uh, cute. All. I think you actually told me about yeah, that. Yeah. No, I've never true. I've never been there. She keeps bugging me to go out there. Um, and she <laughs> keeps bugging me to shoot there. But I'm scared because the weather is like real iffy. Yeah. You know, you can end up having like a rainstorm. Yeah, that's how it was in like, Hawaii too. Yeah, for like a but week. But it's cold still So with the rain. Yeah, but I mean, you don't want to like take a whole production out there no. and then like not be able to shoot yeah, for a week. And then the would... day you leave, it's Yeah, so exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's how Hawaii was too. Exactly. We're going to the Bahamas in January. Oh, during awesome. During my boobs recovery, my big job. Is that where you're going to go recover from your yeah, surgery Yeah, like three weeks Bahamas? after. We're going to go for a week and I'm just going to sit there with my big boobies. <laughs> you're very excited, aren't <laughs> I'm you? I'm so excited, yeah. <laughs> So you have you guys have a website too, Sins Life. Sinslife dot com is our website, yeah. and then t- what's on that? That's all like because I think that your whole purpose is sort of a, a more like raw look at sex, right? It's yeah. like a lot of it's like POV. Most of it is GoPro, yeah. Most mm-hmm. of it's like shot ourselves. There's like almost a thousand videos up there of like threesomes or me and Johnny alone or solos and stuff like that. But mm-hmm. we shot all kind. We shot Adriana Chechik and Megan Rain and like a beautiful waterfall in Hawaii. Is that where you guys like, like dragged the floaty up there? Yeah. <laughs> and Megan almost died. <gasps> what happened? We were like, we, cause in Hawaii you, you go to the first waterfall and all the tourists are there. Right? Uh-huh. And then you climb to, there's, you can always just keep climbing the waterfalls in right. Hawaii. So the further you climb up, the less tourists, because you lose tourists, right? Because they can't. Yeah, because they don't want to make that. They don't want to deal with yeah, that. Yeah, so yeah. like by the fourth or fifth waterfall is always like this like 
Eden, like gorgeous, never like insane, beautiful place. It's mm -hmm. totally untouched, but to get there is really hard. So we had gotten there. We had like an epic four way. And then on our way back, it was pitch. It, the sun had gone down. And in Maui, when the sun goes down, it's like down, like it's black, like yeah. black, pitch black. There was nothing. So we had like one of our phones had a light and we were like jumping over rivers that were Anyway, so Megan, like, jumped over this one river but underestimated it, and, like, it took her, and she was, like, l leaving. We had to, like, grab her hand, and we looked over, like, two feet over, like, just right there was, like, a cliff, oh. like, major waterfall. So oh, had she gotten my... taken over, we don't know what would happen Oh, my God. <laughs> but she's all giggling, and we had so she's much like, fun. She's like, I that almost shit. died. It's I love fine. her. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. I would have shit my pants. <laughs> yeah. So, like, there's a lot of, like, reality stuff on our site, and... So, and yeah, so that's what that website did. And then you have like all your Sins merch. Yeah, we, we started this logo a few years ago and it's taken, it's really taken off. Yeah. The, everyone really likes this logo. So yeah, we have um, a merchandise store at shopsinslife.com. And uh, yeah, I love doing that store. It's one of my favorite parts. Yeah. Yeah. You, like I said before, you're really great at marketing. Thanks. And then ABN, you're going to be there signing, right? <laughs> yes, I'll be signing for Jules Jardin. And how do you like that? Like, do you like meeting the fans? Oh, the conventions are my favorite. Yeah? Oh, my God. I love conventions. Like, I, I'm an old school raver, and ra conventions are the closest thing that I get to, like, a rave uh -huh. besides, like, EDC. It's, right. like, very similar to a rave. It's like a sex rave. Yeah. Like, instead of, like, doing drugs or, like, music, like, you have all your friends. You're like, yeah. no, 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 like, everyone's in one room. Right. That energy, like, electrifies me. Like, yeah. in the on the convention room floor. Mm -hmm. I'm like so hyper and just like boobs and butts and like all oh, my friends. And you know, and you like meeting the fans? I love it. I love the whole thing. So have you ever had like any bad experiences? No. No? I love conventions. I mean, I sometimes get sick. That's probably the worst yeah. thing I do. Because like I won't touch my face at all. And then one at the very end, I'll touch my face. I'm like, what? That's Everyone gets one. sick. They call it the avian, the avian flu. flu. Yeah. It's the worst. Yeah. Do you interact with your fans quite a bit? Yeah. Do you ever have anybody that kind of steps over the line? Have you had problems with any of them? No, but I'm not sure if that's because of Johnny. Mm. So I feel like I, I I don't experience a lot of things that some girls are like, oh, do you you know experience this bad thing? And I think that there's like I have a certain level of like a like a barrier there. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's true or not, but yeah. like I've never experienced anything like negative with the fan or anything. Or that's good. You think that they like kind of keep anything. they respect you because of Johnny? Like, I don't know. Think Johnny's I gonna kick I their think ass that. or. Do they like, I don't know, maybe is there that element, like, you know how some girls will have a boyfriend, but they won't let people know about yeah. it because they want their fans to hold on to that yes. hope that they yes. like have a chance someday because yeah. that'll help Which them like, sell a themselves. Good marketing idea, yeah. yeah, better. Um, but obviously that, like your story is totally different. Your story is all about how you're with another man. Yeah. And like how you guys are like a like an item. And yeah, and it's, it's interesting because I actually had to slow down with my social media of him when I started working with other guys because it was ruining everyone's perception of me. Like you're saying, like it's a much smarter, I think, to hide your boyfriend. Yeah, as a porn star because it it just makes you like yeah. unattainable. People weren't into it as much. Yeah, I did notice actually that there's been less posts with the two of you guys together yeah. on social media. So that was a conscious decision. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But everybody, she's still with Johnny. I am still with Johnny. <laughs> and they're still very much in love. Yeah. We love to hear the rumors, though. Those are our favorites. <laughs> really? Like, in makeup, I'm like, oh, cool new rumor about me <laughs> that I've never heard before. <laughs> it's one thing to, like, hear rumors about other people, but to hear yeah. rumors about yourself is really funny. Yeah. I'm like, oh, those facts. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. Well, thank you so much, Kissa. You're We're going to do the Ask Kissa portion separately for um, everyone on my Patreon. You do have a bunch of fans that have asked questions. So you guys can go to patreon.com slash Unfiltered to hear that. Kissa, is there anybody else? That, anybody else? Is there anything else you want to tell your listeners, our listeners, uh, my listeners? No, I love the you The listeners. Very much. And I don't know. Lo love me forever because I love you. <laughs> and can you tell everyone where they can find you on social media? Yes, I'm on Twitter at Kiss of Sins. I'm on Instagram at Coyote Loves You. And if you want to vote for me for Female Performer of the Year at Exfiz and EVN, I would like that very much. 
Oh, yeah. We forgot to mention that, that you are up for that. Yeah, I'm up for um, Performer of the Year in both and the fan categories, too. So I'm very excited. I think you have a pretty fucking good chance. Ugh. Do you know what you're going to wear yet? No. I, now I have to wait because of my boobs. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But I want to look classy this year. So actually, I need someone to help me dress, help dress me because I do not know how to do classy. But I want to look really classy and pretty. Yeah. You should. You know what I do is um, I just because I don't want to spend the money on a dress, I do rent the runway.com. Oh. And it's like, have you ever heard of it? No. So it's a website that you go to and they have a whole bunch of like like really um, high brand dresses and you can rent them. And they come with, I think they send you like two or three sizes just, you cool. know, because you don't know what exactly is going to fit you. And then you try it on and then you wear it. And if it, actually if you get it early enough, you can return it for a different one if it doesn't work. Um, their customer service is really great. They rent actually the have runway? rent the runway. Oh, cool, I'm gonna do that. They actually have a showroom, I think, at the Topanga Mall where you might be able to try stuff on. Cool. But they have a lot of stuff, and it's pretty cool. Cool. Um. So I don't know. Okay. That's my recommendation. <laughs> if you don't want to actually buy a dress, that's a cool idea. Okay, now they should sponsor me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> All right. Thank you again, Kissa. Thank you. It's been such a pleasure. I love you guys. And I will see the rest of you guys next week. Bye. Bye.